open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verses 27 through 30 this morning. Uh, let me make another note that each week recently we've been putting in a, uh, a sermon notes page as well as a sermon discussion guide on the back that you can use. There are questions from the, uh, uh, not from, initially from the sermon, maybe some other questions that you might want to go over uh, in your own quiet time or with a, uh, another person or with your family. Uh, that would be a great way to continue to worship the Lord uh, this morning. Um, let me have you turn again to uh, Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 27 uh, and ending in verse 30. Let's read the, the word of the Lord together. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks with a lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin... Tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right eye causes you to sin, or excuse me, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off, throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than your whole body go to hell. Heavenly Father, we, we realize, Father, that our standard of righteousness is low. We kind of look at our lives and we, we think to ourselves that we're okay because we compare ourselves to other people. Father, may we never do that. May we compare ourselves to Jesus. May we compare ourselves to you. You are holy. There is none like you. And no matter what we're going through today, you stay the same. You are the Holy One, the God that never changes. Creating us a heart, Father, that is willing to accept your standards, your way, and your will, as opposed to our way, our standards, and our will. Speak to our hearts and change them by your Holy Spirit today. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I found this image uh, this week that kind of summarizes our society, doesn't it? Promiscuity is at least encouraged or at least assumed in our society, probably even more now than it was 50 years ago. Uh, we're bombarded with what sexual messages, movies, TV, shows, books, music, advertisements. But you know, it's not a first century development. It's not a 21st century development. Every generation and every people has struggled with it. You see, living a pure life is hard. The picture there shows that we kind of want our cake and eat it too. We don't want to live up to the standards that God has given us. We want to live up to our own standards or what makes us feel good. Throughout history, there has been churches and cultures in which it's considered acceptable and it's a sign of success for a married man even to have a mistress or a married man to visit a prostitute or in which it is assumed that two young people who were dating would be sexually involved. See, sexual temptation is nothing new. People have struggled with it for centuries. N.T. Wright said this, Blessed are the pure in heart. How will people believe that unless we ourselves are worshiping the living God until our own hearts are set on fire and scorched through with his purity? With his purity, our hearts have to be captivated by God's purity. Do you want your heart set on fire? Think about God. Think about his purity. See, when Pete, Jesus addressed this topic, he was not just addressing people way back there. He was also addressing people today. 
And the things that he said are just as relevant today as they were in the day that Jesus spoke them. In this passage, Jesus talks and tells us how to deal with sexual temptation. This, but also the same principle applies to all sin. He uses the example, this example, because for most people, sexual temptation is the strongest. If there is a sin that you struggle with today, or there's a sin that you struggle with day after day after day, and it seems to have your name on it, Jesus shows you you can break the grip and power of that sin. And there are three things that you can do. Three things that he shows us here. You can break the power of sin. You can break the power of sin by looking away. By looking away. Back in the 70s, there was a man running for the presidency. His name was Jimmy Carter. And in 1975, he did an interview for Playboy magazine in which he admitted to committing adultery many times in his heart because he had looked at a woman lustfully in his thoughts, with his thoughts. For several months after the interview, do you all remember Johnny Carson? Johnny Carson would make fun of uh, Jimmy Carter because of that. And yet he was just honestly admitting to a sin I would suspect and venture to say that every other person on this planet has committed the sin of having lustful thoughts. Carter made the statement he was referring to the verses that we're looking at today. Jesus said... In Matthew 5, you have heard it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks upon a woman or at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. You see, the message we're, we get again and again by our society is that looking doesn't hurt anything. They say, just because you're on a diet doesn't mean you can't look at the menu. You see, we, we, we justify a lot of things, don't we? Um, fantasies are all over the place. They're normal. And people say they're healthy. You know, some, some even marriage experts say that sharing with your spouse your fantasies about others can spice up your relationship. Marilyn Monroe, do you remember her? She says, I have too many fantasies to be a housewife. I guess I am a fantasy. You see, the mind will do strange things. But Jesus teaches the exact opposite. He says, looking at someone uh, lustfully is just as detrimental to your heart and soul as if you actually physically committed it. Why is that? Primarily is that when you look at someone lustfully, you are viewing that person as nothing more than an object of pleasure. You're looking like this guy here. It causes you to determine the person's value based upon how they make you feel when you look at them. And that hurts you spiritually. We said this last week that with contempt or anger... That hurts you personally because it puts a barrier between you and another person. The same thing here. It puts a barrier between you and another person when you have lustful thoughts. We also need to keep in mind that thoughts create actions. They pave the way for you to do something. To break the stronghold that this sin or any other sin in your life has on you, you begin by diverting your attention, diverting your eyes, and looking away. Looking away. You can't live in a society without being confronted with provocative images and messages. But you don't have to stare. This guy's staring, isn't he? 
he, he, he's searching it out. In fact, he has some binoculars to even help him do that. You can turn the channel. You can get up and leave the theater. You can take the book back to the library. You can divert your eyes to something else. In my 20s, I was living with five other guys in California. And we had this rule because we wanted to protect our hearts. We had one TV in the house, and that was in what we would call, you would call today the family room or the den. And in that family room, we had 20 or 25 pillows that was around on the couches and everything so we could relax and everything. But when an image came across the screen, this is what we did. If one person had a problem, they would throw the pillow at the TV. And then all of us would attempt to throw all 25 pillows at the TV. To the point where the TV was not being able to be seen. And it just reminded us all the time that we can look away. We don't have to take in the things that the society says that are good for us. We can divert our attention. We can divert our eyes. To rephrase the saying I mentioned earlier, if you're on a diet... You don't have to look at the menu. The more you look at the menu, guess what? The more likely you are to what? Break the diet, right? Look at this picture. Now, don't get up and leave. I know you want to eat. But has this ever happened to you? You're watching your calories and you go to the restaurant and you're sitting on a salad, but you see the picture of a steak and a baked potato and they do that well, you know. And with butter and sour cream and all the things and you forget about the salad and what do you do? You go for the steak. I like steak. The same is with all types of temptation. The longer you look, the stronger it becomes. Secondly, to break the grip of sin's temptation with the power of sin... You do it by cutting it out. Cutting it out. Now let me ask you this. In this passage, Jesus says this. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. I see everybody here with usually two good Okay, let me, let me go on. For it's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. Everybody raise their right hand. You all have it, don't you? Hopefully it's working. Now, now do we take the Bible literally when it says these things? I think Jesus, we literally take Jesus as being figuratively, don't we? He literally is teaching us something here about the aggressiveness which we deal with sin in our life. He said, he's saying to us, get rid, get rid of anything in your life that is causing the temptation. I found this the picture. It was... Um, he has one hand on the bottom and one eye and he's getting rid of stuff and he's cutting it out of his life. I, I have a friend of mine, a few years ago, I, I asked him for his email address and he said he didn't have one. I said, uh, do you know this new invention called the internet? And he said, I don't use the internet because I have a problem with porn and I don't trust myself. This man's life is inconvenienced because he can't use the internet. It hurts his business, he says. It prevents him from emailing his kids who are at college. He misses out on all the good and uplifting helpful material that can be found online. He can't check ball scores. He can't customize his driving directions. He can't check his bank accounts, purchase a book, or read 100 of the devotions that are online. He can't keep up with ministries or missions that way because he doesn't trust himself. He said he would rather sacrifice convenience 
than to get trapped in sin. See, I also know people that don't have cable TV because they can't trust themselves to turn the channel. I know people who won't listen to certain kind of music because it lessens their resistance to temptation. I know people who have terminated relationships because the relationships led them into tempting situations. This is what Jesus is talking about. Whatever causes you to sin, cut it out. If being in certain situations is too tempting for you to resist, avoid that situation. Will avoiding those situations eliminate temptation? Answer is no. But it will eliminate a lot of it. I know of a guy who was an alcoholic who said he moved to a place where there was a dry county so that when he went to work, he wouldn't have to drive by the, the stores all the time. Now, he could, and he did this, he, he could go 30 miles and get all he wanted. And sometimes he fell into that. But it was, the temptation was at least less at that point, but he didn't get rid of it in his heart. And if you're struggling with temptation, look for things that you can cut out that will minimize your exposure to tempting situations. It may not be what Jesus is talking about here, but there's always something in our heart that we deal with. You know, it may not be this, it could be worry, couldn't it? Remember, Jesus is going to tell us that worry is not something that we should be a part of. It says, do not be anxious for anything in Matthew 6. But by, he, he says, don't be anxious for things. But seek first what? The kingdom of God and all these things will be given to you. You see, whatever you have to do to keep you out of the situation that cause you to sin, cut it out. It's better to do it without TV than to be trapped with sin. It's better to, be, to have, uh, do without a date than to be trapped in sin. It's better to get, not to get a promotion than to be trapped in sin. Because the Bible says this. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. The Apostle Paul says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond that of your ability. But with the temptation... He will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to, what? Endure it. It is easier, it is easier to avoid temptation than to resist it. If you play with it, our hearts, it's a matter, see our hearts really sometimes crave it. Even, even as Christians, the Apostle Paul struggled with temptation. Remember he said, when I want to do good, what, what, what's right there with him? Evil's right there with him, right? In a devotional book called My Daily Bread, they give this illustration. It comes from Greek mythology. I don't believe in Greek mythology, but it comes from Greek mythology about sirens who inhabited the Mediterranean coast. As the ship passed by, the sirens sang such an enchanting song that the sailors drawn by the music would jump overboard and be drowned. Odysseus was on the ship that had to pass by that way. Aware of the powerful allurement, he ordered that he be bound with ropes to the mask and that the crewmen's ears be sealed with wax to block out the tantalizing music of the sirens. Having taken such precautions, Odysseus and the rest of his crew sailed past without yielding to the lure of the sea, sirens. As Christians, we have to be prepared to resist any temptation to evil. We must hate sin and be so serious about it by not giving in to its allurement that we determine to deny ourselves desire not to, to participate in it. Are there reoccurring sins in your life that have been defeating you? Drastic majors can be taken. You must keep away from the enticements that you know will play upon your weakness. The best protection against sin is to heed Paul's warning. He says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22, flee useful lust but pursue righteousness. That's good counsel. 
See, it's easier to avoid temptation than to resist it. To break out of the stronghold and the grip of sin in your life, look the other way. Then cut it out. And thirdly, you can break the power of sin by guarding your heart. You can look away from temptation and avoid sinful situations, but you can't completely eliminate them. Because desire, the desire to sin is a matter of the heart. It's a matter of your heart. You can get rid of the temptation or the internet. You can't get rid of the temptation. You get rid of the internet, the TV. You can smash your TV, but you still have books. You can throw your books away, but you have billboards. And of course, other people. There's no way to escape all temptations. In the fourth century, there was a man by the name of Andrew. He t and he tried to escape all temptation. In order to escape the temptation of immorality, he became a hermit, living in the Egyptian deserts for over 30 years. And at his deathbed, he said, you know what? He still struggled with his lustful thoughts. See, that's because temptation, whatever form it takes, is a matter of your heart. It's not just the outward observance and putting on the nice face. It's a matter of your heart and what your heart says. See, King David, after he had committed adultery and murder, made this prayer to God. He said this. He said, Lord, create in me, what? A clean heart. Oh God, renew a right spirit within me. You don't have the power to resist sin in yourself. Temptations. It is the spirit's job, what? To create your heart clean and pure. But you have to want that. You have to really, really want it. You have to say, Lord, I want you more than anything. You know, we sung today, and I had to confess when we, we sang it. Uh, what was the song? Um, I love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind. With Every time I sing that, I have to say, you know, Lord, I haven't done that. If I'm honest. There have been times this week, there's been times that I've looked at my life, I go, you know, I have not done that. I may have taken more pleasure out of my team winning last night than I did God. Oh, and by the way, my team did win last night. <laughs> but... In order to change and break the grip of sin, we have to experience a change of heart. And it's the reason Jesus went to the cross, isn't it? We don't contribute. We, we can do things that are means of grace, but even if we do all the things that we're supposed to do, guess what? We still have to depend on who? God, don't we? We still have to look to the cross and say, you know what? The power in my life doesn't come from me. It comes from a cross lived out life. Earlier in the Sermon on the Mount, he said, blessed are the pure in heart for what? They will see God. Do you want to see God? Is that your number one priority is to see God? To love God? Then let's fight. We are soldiers that need to fight. And I want to say this. When Jesus can make your heart, no matter where you are, Jesus can clean your heart. He did that because he paid for sin and he also paid for the cleansing of our sin. The purifying of our sin. And your heart can become pure that dating isn't a problem. Surfing the internet is not a problem. Working with an attractive member is not a problem. Jesus wants to purify your heart. But you know what? We have to join 
what he's doing and not say, you know what, it really doesn't matter. Learn to look away. Learn to avoid the, the situations that tempt you. Focus on the work he wants you to do internally with your life. If there's a sin that has have you in its grip today, you can be free from its power. Paul said this in Romans 6.14. Because he just mentioned that Jesus died and rose again and is sitting at the right hand of God and God's sending his spirit. He said this, he says, for sin will not have dominion over you. Why? Since you're not under law, you're under grace. All of us can be victorious over sin. Even the biggest sins in our lives, the one that has your name on it, it could be pride and jealousy or anger or greed, whatever it may be, you can be free from the grip of sin. But we can't be passive. You can't say, just let go and let God. You have to say, God, I need your help. Some of you have been so inundated with this world that you can't even think about what a life would be without temptation, without sin. And your, your relationship with God has been hurt. Hurt. See, the world says if you do it, it's not going to hurt you. But the Bible says if you do it, it's going to hurt you. It's going to affect your relationship with God. But there's grace to be had. And the reason why we are here today is not to say, do this, do this, do this. But to remember in our minds, who is the one that saved us from those things? It's Jesus, isn't it? It's Jesus who saves us. It is Jesus who will change us. And it is Jesus who will lead us all the way home. But it is a matter of our heart. Will you trust Christ today? Will you trust what he has accomplished for you on, your, uh, for you on the cross? And what he is doing now in this world and through his spirit. You have to ask him for help. Ask him. And then look away. Cut it out. And guard your heart. Heavenly Father, as we approach your throne today.